Welcome back. Today we're joined by neurologist, sleep specialist, and author Chris uh, Winter, Dr. Chris Winter, to give us some tips on getting a good night's sleep. It's so important. Good morning. How's it going? Good, good morning, welcome, or thanks for having me. Absolutely, now uh, America is sleep deprived. I'm one of those, I just wanna know how important, uh, Dr. Winter, is sleep? Sleep is extremely important, so it's, it's unfortunate to hear you're sleep deprived, but your story I don't think is unique. You know, I'm here talking about a podcast called Chasing Sleep, and there's a wonderful episode featuring ABC News correspondent Diane Macedo, and she really gives a personal story about what it's like to do what you do and get up early and, and have the stress of reporting the news and being right on first thing in the morning. So I can sympathize with you after listening to her episode for sure. Yes. So how do you know what is the right amount of sleep for your body? Yeah, we talk about that a lot. I mean, I think that a lot of people misunderstand the eight hours. Eight hours is really sort of the middle of the bell curve distribution. So there are people who need more and there are people who need less. So I think the answer to your question is, how do you perform during the day? If you sit down during a very boring meeting or you're stopped in traffic, are you somebody who struggles to stay awake? So if excessive sleepiness is a big part of your life, talk to somebody about it because it probably indicates that you're not getting enough sleep or the sleep that you're getting, there's a problem with its quality. Hmm. Yeah, so you think people, if they pay attention, they would know, um, you know, you hear those people say, oh, I can sleep when I'm dead. I mean, I know that I have to sleep or I will be dead. I'm seriously, I, I, I feel that. So people need to pay attention to them, to the way they feel. Absolutely. I mean, I think the way you feel is everything, and sleep is the underpinning of our health. When we think about exercise, we think about nutrition, but really sleep plays a huge role in all the things we do, not only from a health perspective, but a performance perspective. If you're going to be the best correspondent you can be, it's very difficult to do those things when you're underslept. I work with a lot of professional sports organizations. It is really the key to not only performance, but the recovery of their bodies after their athletic events. Uh, Dr. Winter, is there, are there things that we're doing wrong when we're getting ready for bed? Like I've heard, don't watch TV in bed or don't do this phone. in bed or be on your phone. Mm -hmm. Are there things we should not be doing? Yeah, so I love the Chasing Sleep podcast, but listening to it right when you're trying to go to bed is probably not the best thing in the world. I think electronics and media play a huge negative role in terms of our sleep. There are some great television out there. I encourage everybody to watch it. I've got my own favorite shows for sure, but we really want to create a schedule and a routine before we go to bed that really prioritizes sleep. So yes, I know you could watch one more episode of the British Baking or House of the Dragon or whatever you're watching, but that show will be there tomorrow. Prioritize your sleep. You'll thank yourself for it the next morning and years down the line. I, wanna... I was watching the British Bake Off yesterday. That's <laughs> funny you say that because that's what I was watching last night, Doctor. Well, is it Biscuit it. Week I yet? If I, if I missed Biscuit Week, I got to see Biscuit Week. It was right? Dessert yeah. Week this week. There you go. There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right, Dessert Week. That's right. I have to ask you because I used to be the best sleeper. I would fall asleep in mid-sentence, and my grandma would say this. She would say, I'm tired, but I'm not sleepy. I'm like, I don't oh. understand what you're talking about, but now I do. Yeah, in my first book, The Sleep Solution, I wrote a whole chapter about the difference between being tired versus being sleepy or fatigued and being sleepy. You know, you can run 26 miles and, and, and at the end of that race, you're tired, your body has no energy, but you're not necessarily sleepy. So understanding the difference between being fatigued and being sleepy and communicating that to your physician can make a huge difference in terms of you getting shunted down the right diagnostic pathway. Okay, doctor, now I'm gonna ask you a really tricky question, especially with people in our business getting up early. How important or unimportant is napping in the middle of the day? What do you recommend? Do you, should we nap or no? Yeah, napping is a really interesting question um, that I like to talk about uh, a lot. I think napping is extremely important as a tool for making up sleep that you should have gotten, but something prevented you from getting it. I think where we have to be careful with napping is where somebody says, look, I went to bed at 11 o'clock, but it took me three hours to fall asleep. 
So then I took a three hour nap during the day. Sometimes napping when it's used when you had the opportunity to sleep but didn't choose to do it can make a small problem much worse over time, which is why I always tell people schedule is everything. And my joke is often, you know, the worst thing for your sleep is retirement because now you no longer have that schedule that sort of keeps your sleep on a routine sort of basis. Do you talk on your podcast about like melatonin and different uh, things that people would take to try to help get that rest? Do you, do you talk about anything like that? Uh, things that people take to help them like sleep? Like melatonin, that, that kind of thing. Or sleeping pills. To help them sleep. Yeah, so the, the Chasing Sleep podcast is really sort of personal stories about, you know, ER doctors, news people, gamers, and the struggles that they've had with sleep. So there is communication about that. In my own writing and podcast, I, I do talk about sleep aids a lot. I'm not a big fan of them. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, humans drink water, breathe air, eat food from time to time, and we sleep. It's impossible not to sleep. So I think, you know, using that as a point of reference and making sure that we're not judging the quality of our sleep by how fast we fall asleep mm -hmm. or what I always call speed to unconsciousness is no better of a marker of good sleep than how fast you eat your dinner is a marker of good nutrition. Doctor, wow. if people want more information uh, about your podcast, where can they find it and more information about sleeping? Yeah, you can find information about Chasing Sleep everywhere that there's podcasts, the iHeartMedia app, uh, Apple Podcasts. Uh, I'm on uh, Twitter and Instagram at Dr. Chris Winter, and there's all kinds of information from there that you can find about the sleep issues that you're dealing with today. Thank you, Dr. Winter. We'll be looking you up for yeah, sure. I, I'm just going to say my secret is a glass of wine in the Great British Baking Show, but I'm just saying that works for me. Just thank cut the wine out. Cut okay. the wine out and we're good. <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Okay, so much. Thank you so much. All right, don't go anywhere. So much more fun on Ozark's Fox AM right after this. I felt I need to be honest with the doctor. <laughs> I tell you what I did, and I said,